be born again, they saw something that they was not able to see. And watch what it says in verse 23. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Amen. The mind. Because the mind is the mouth to the spirit. That's how my mouth is the channel to my stomach. Well, the mind is the channel to your soul. This is why when the power of God hits you, when the presence of God blows upon you, you'll know it because you have new strength. You have an appetite for the word. You have an appetite for righteousness. That appetite is not your own ability. It is his power. It is his strength. He's graced you with that ability to come after him. And if you really notice, if you really notice when the presence of God really overshadows you and you are in a place of worship, you, if you really start recognizing, if, if you really start to really think about it, it seems as if when his presence moves, those thoughts that you thought were your thoughts, those suggestions, those, those attitudes, those things that you thought was your thoughts, you see that they somewhat has vanished away. That's good. They, they vanished away. And now you have a mind for Christ. Now you have a mind for the word. Because the enemy was trying to deceitfully without you knowing because he wanted to make you think that it was you thinking the thoughts. He wanted you to think that it was you thinking those ideas and those suggestions. He wanted to confuse you because again when he begins to speak in the mind, he confuses you because he sounds like you. He, he, he sounds like you. And this is interesting because in the Garden of Eden, the reason why I believe Eve was deceived was because I don't believe that the serpent came in a, in a, in a, in a way that that would have scared her off because I believe that if the enemy came in a way that would have scared her off that she would not have came and ate of the fruit but I believe that the enemy came in a familiar voice Good. that she could not recognize as being the enemy and she gave in to a suggestion which infiltrated and cause darkness, death, and pain. It's the mind. When the Spirit of God moves upon you, in fact, uh, it, it brings my attention to a scripture. Everyone go to Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5. And we're going to move swiftly. And I promise you I won't be here too long. Mark, <laughs> Mark chapter 5. This is a man that was possessed by legions of demons. And we're going to see what takes place after the Spirit of God moves upon this man. After Jesus speaks the word and casts out the demons, we're going to see something that takes place. Matt, uh, Mark chapter 5, verse 1. And when you get there, say amen. And I want everybody to follow me. I know it's going to be a lot of reading, but please follow me, okay? Verse 1. And they came over to the other side of the sea into the country of the Gardeans. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met out of, the, uh, out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs. And no man could bind him, no, not with chains, because that he had had often, often uh, bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him. And the feathers broken into in pieces. Neither could any man tame him. He couldn't be tamed. He, he couldn't be controlled. He couldn't be tamed or controlled. Verse 5. And always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying and cutting himself with stones. He was trying to hurt himself. He was trying to bring harm and hurt and pain to himself. Verse 6. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him and cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus? Jesus, thou son of the most high God, I adjure thee by God, that thou torment me not, for he said unto him, this is what Jesus said, come out of the man, thou unclean spirit, verse 9, and he asked him, what is thy name? And he answered, saying, my name is Legion, for we are many. Notice 
the enemy's voice. Look at verse 7. Verse 6. Watch this. Very, look at this very carefully. But when he saw Jesus, this is the man. Listen, watch this. Afar off, he ran and worshipped him. Watch verse 7. Watch verse 7. And he cried with a loud voice and said it. Now, interesting, watch what this takes place. The Bible says that the man cried and said, but we do recognize the one that cried and said was the demon. But he was speaking as the man. Because, watch this, because the enemy was working inside of him, operating within his mind and fooling the man, thinking that those thoughts and the suggestions within, within him was him. Watch what he says. Verse 7, and, he, and cried with a loud voice and said, What have I do with thee? Yeah, because see, he, that's how deceiving he is. Because he wants to trick you within your mind. And making you think that is that is you. That that's your thoughts. But the reality is, it is just the seeds of the enemy trying to sprout within your mind to deceive you and lure you away from God. Now watch this. Verse 9, and he asked him, what is thy name? And he answered saying, my name is Legion, for we are many. And he besought him much that he would not send them away off the country. Verse 11, now there was there nigh unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding. And all the devils besought him saying, send us into, see, look, now, see, see what's starting to happen? See, see, what, see what happens, see the enemy starts to reveal itself because as you, as, you, as you continue to walk closer to God, you begin to recognize the enemy and his fiends. In the beginning state, not at the first state, the Bible says that the man answered and said, but as he began to continue to conversate with Jesus, we see that the enemy then reveals his true identity and says that we... Because this is what happens when, the, when you dwell in his presence. The light is revealed. And darkness has to be exposed. And it has to run. Watch what takes place. Verse 12. And all the devils besought him saying, send us into the swine that we may eat, enter into them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave, and the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine, and the herds ran violently down the step, a, a, a steep place in the sea, and there were about 2,000, 2,000. Do you know, see, look at how two, they were, uh, uh, initially he, he said one. It was just the man speaking. But now as he continues to conversate with Jesus, they shift from, from him saying we're just, it's the man, to us. All within a conversation with Jesus. Watch this. And we're choked in the sea. Now watch this. And they that fed that, that, and, and they that fed the swine fled. And it was told in the city in that country, they went out to see what was what, what that was done. And when they came to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind. Somebody say mind. mind. He was in his right mind. Because again, when Jesus begins to come close to you, the darkness that is within the mind flees. And what you thought were your thoughts and your ideas, you thought it was just you being lustful or jealous or hateful. Or you thought that those suggestions were you. But the reality is, again, those were the seeds of the enemy bombarding the mind. And as you continue to move closer to Jesus, th this is why it's important to dwell in his presence. Because he, he can take, this is the, 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 the parable of, uh, another parable about the kingdom, when he said that a, that a man went out and sowed seed into his field. And when he went to sow seeds into the field, the Bible said that, that, that uh, uh, another man sowed tares while they slept. See, see, that's what the enemy does as...